here's something a little different. We got us a cattle drive. How about that? Let's see if we can get through here without running over hamburger. in the hotel in short sleeves I <laughs> came back out to the truck this morning and grabbed this sweater my windshield was totally iced over but uh, oh man I can't get my phone thing out there oh well so this is what I'm dealing with right now and ice on the built up on the wipers oh <sighs> found a nice little place to park here in Reno um, I come over here a lot uh, this is just kind of the one of the routes I like to run I call it Colorado Loop sometimes it's just going around Colorado through Utah sometimes I like it. my favorite route is driving from Reno to Vegas I just love that out through there there's nothing out there but um, so a plan my plan it's, it was so good. I set myself up so well, uh, but you just never know. So, man, this is really coming down right now. Um, so I delivered in Idaho. Uh, took about a five-hour drive down here to Reno. Got my room. Uh, did my reset. And woke up this morning. And my plan was to... Uh, you know, out of Reno, I can get to Sacramento, Northern California. Um, there's a couple of uh, uh, there's Army, Air Force, uh, a couple of bases down there. I could get to that have lots of stuff coming out. Um, if I needed to, I could get to Salt Lake City. You know, at the, it, it'd be a long drive, but uh, there's sometimes there's stuff coming out of Reno, so I wasn't too worried about it. You know, I was I was in reach with of everything. I woke up this morning, I rolled over and I looked out the window and everything looked good. 
I uh, got a shower and I walked over to the window and I looked down, I was on the 18th floor. I'll show you guys where I was at. Right up there at the top of the building. And I looked down and everything was white. And I thought, that, man, that looks weird. And I realized uh, that it snowed overnight. I didn't, I didn't know, I didn't look at the weather forecast. I, now's the time of year I gotta start doing that. But, uh, so I jumped on Google and I looked at the route over to Sacramento and it was iced up in the mountains apparently because it was it was like a four and a half hour drive when it should be a, a two to two and a half three hour drive and so that really hurt my plan and I thought um, yeah I'm in trouble uh, there were a couple loads on the board coming out of Reno Sparks area but they were vehicles and I don't necessarily like to do vehicles my ramps I've got to make some alterations to them so I can get uh, lower clearance vehicles on there but trucks, you know, they weigh about 4,500 to 5,000 pounds. So I didn't want to do that and go through the mountains. So I was refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. And to my surprise, a load popped up on the board. Let's do this. This delivery, which was scheduled for right now, um, which was agreed upon when I picked this thing up, uh, almost didn't happen unless I raised hell I hate doing that, but uh, um, picked this stuff up, kept calling the receiver, and one time he picked up and said, hey, I'm having an emergency, and hung up on me. So I texted him throughout the day a couple of times. He finally got back to me and said, no, I can't be there till Friday, which today is Thursday morning. And I said, that's, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work. Um, his emergency wasn't a, an actual emergency. It was that he was busy at work. So, uh, I let the uh, agent know. And uh, so he pulled some strings or something and said, okay, I'll, I'll have somebody there to unload you. So that's where we're at right now. And uh, somebody here, they called somebody at the job site and they agreed to unload me. So let's get this. <sighs> okay. Easy peasy. Now we got to back out of here. Lots of things on the ground or else I could do a U-turn. The guy asked me where I brought this from, and I told him, he goes, man, that's like 700 miles. And I said, yeah, it took me the whole day. You drove 700 miles in one day? <laughs> he sounded exactly like uh, somebody from Southern California. Oh my God, dude. Really nice guy though. All right, we're out of the building. Didn't scratch anything. Come on, turn it over. This little bitty trailer, I tell you what, I, I guess uh, over the years I got used to backing those 48 and 53 foot trailers. This little one takes some real getting used to because you barely touch the wheel and that sucker's gonna turn. Alright, now I gotta find me a spot up here. Do some paperwork and some payroll. What to do about these freaking foreign agencies? They're, man, they're becoming a real pain in the butt. 
and I've had trouble with them going back years now uh, to when I was at Landstar. They are really a problem at Landstar, but Landstar refuses to do anything about them too. Um, you know the the thing is, I you know I don't want to call on a load, get a foreign voice, and immediately hang up the phone. You know, be that butthole. But it's getting to that point. Um, what they used to do at Landstar, well, they used to do several things, but one of them I called the bait and switch. You'd uh, look at Landstar's load board and the load would pop up, say, Houston to Dallas. And then all of a sudden, you'd refresh it and there'd be six loads on there, Houston, Dallas, all the exact same loads, but each one listed for a few dollars more than the last one. Let this guy go by. Yeah, each one would be listed for you know twenty-five, fifty dollars more than the last one. So of course, what you're going to do is you're going to call the one that's listed for the most money, and here's where they'd start messing you around. They say, "Okay, my friend, the load is yours. I'm, I'm booking it," but they don't really have the load for that much money. They just got you on the line and got you on the hook. And here's what they would do: they make some excuse, they call you back and ask you a question just uh, delaying and then at some point before you get the rate con they call you and they'd say oh my friend uh, the shipper now does not want to pay this amount will you take it for this amount that happened to me numerous times now what I'm seeing and uh, like I said I've been wondering how how are these guys getting these loads because um, you can't just go pick them up off the load board and re, re uh, you know, put them out there on the load board. But here's, when I talked to the agent, when I booked this load yesterday, I called him several times. It was, it kept going to voicemail. He was, you know, on the phone with somebody. When I finally got in touch with him, he was sort of pissed off. And he said, man, these foreign agencies are killing me. And I was like, well, what do you mean? Well, here's what they do. And when he said it, I was like, aha, now it makes sense. What they do is they call in, when a, some, when a load goes on the load board, they call in right away. And they act like they're booking the load and they're the driver um, or the dispatcher for the driver. And they book the load, they try to negotiate and they book the load, but what they're really doing is they're double brokering. So after they book the load, they'll turn around and put it back on the load board, but slightly, they'll change the town slightly on each end, you know, 10 miles from the original town and 10 miles from the, the receiving town. And as soon as he said that, I was like, man, that, that's happened to me several times. And I didn't make any sense because the agent, you know, they would say, oh, my friend, it really isn't going to this town. You know, I couldn't find that one on the app, so I have put in this town. And I knew they were messing me around somehow, but now it makes sense. They're, they're, you know, all of us are out here trying to book a load. And if you wait 10 seconds for a good load, it's already booked. Somebody's already called on it. Um, and that's what they're doing. They're calling, you know, they have people sitting there speed dialing on these phones. Um, you know, a whole office full of people grabbing up these loads as fast as they can and then uh, double brokering. And man, it, it is a pain in the butt. Um, and I'm, I'm to the point where I'm, if you know, I'm going to refuse if I call in and they're foreign, I guess I'm just going to have to hang up now. I hate to do that, but, uh, I've got a list. I'm starting a list of all these agencies. They're all connected. That's the other thing. They're all connected together. Um, they fall somehow under the umbrella of, you know, one company. Um, they all have different, uh, you know, MC numbers and stuff, but they're all the same. And I'm not sure how that works, but... Um, so what they do, it, you know, you, you call in and if you check, if you factor and you check their credit, they're all declined. The, none of the factoring companies will work with them. And they want you to sign, they now started this thing where they want you to sign up for this service called rig pay or something like that. And they want you to pay for this service and... <sighs> It, it's really it, it's a pain in the butt but here's the thing they so now in the past couple of I've done I've told them hey if I do this load I want to be paid immediately 
because that's what they put on their on the advertisement when they put it on the load board pay ACH and you know all this stuff so when it comes time when I deliver when it comes time to collect payment every single time it is a nightmare to get my money out of them I'll say okay here's you know send me my ACH payment um, you know if I'm emailing because they don't want you to call them they won't give you a number they want you to email and if you call the you know any number they'll never answer so it is just a, a real pain in the butt they get give all kinds of excuses to delay paying you for days and it's just to the point like I said I'm, I'm pretty much done with them and um, these agents are the ones who are gonna have to do their homework to keep these foreign agencies out of the loop.